Hi there. Um, thanks for checking out this video. I'm hoping that this is going to help somebody out there. It's got one of these testers. Um, this is going to be, I done another video like this, but I wanted to do maybe a little bit better one. Uh, see if it maybe make a little more sense, but this is a, um, I've already fixed this one, but this is going to be a how to video of how to replace and reset the battery inside of a Gallagher smart fix. Um, I've got a case for another one sitting over here. The other name they call it is a fault finder. Same exact thing, just different uh, boards are a little bit different. The fault finder, at least the current ones that are out now that they call them, um, they show both volts and amps at the same time with the fault finding on there. These old ones, you'd press it and KV would come on and then you press it again. Within a couple of seconds, it, you know, A, you can switch it back and forth between A and KV like that. The new ones, it shows both at the same time on the same screen. Um, all right, well, let's uh, show you a little bit about this tester. This is a a good, good tester. If you don't have one of these, don't have a fault finder or one of these Gallagher's uh, fault finder, excuse me, or one like it, I would, if you got a lot of fence or a big area and, and you're just tired of pulling your hair out, these things are worth their weight in gold on these fault finders. Um, Get, uh, speed right and um, stay fixed both make one uh, Zariba's got their fence compass or something like that but what's nice about the Gallagher ones over those other brands these are repairable I mean not just not just replacing the battery in one but you can get parts for these internally the, the Zariba the, the speed rights the stay fixed uh, fault finders and stuff you can't fix them if they go bad you know you're you're out of luck you got to Toss it, buy a new one, you know, unfortunately, but these ones are repairable. So, and they're not, I mean, they're a hundred bucks new and, you know, they can be a little bit, you know, about half price or give or take the, the fix one. But, uh, you know, there's not much to them internally, just a board and a battery. Um, first thing you want to do is do not pull this apart up here. Someone sees the screws on those because these have these little plastic plugs in the back. People don't recognize it or know that you need to pull these out to get to the screws behind them. But people will take this thing apart up here and oh there's a spring inside here this one's missing a little button that goes right here that locks the, the probe thing right here in place but they'll pull this apart and the spring is still compressed a little bit you take that out there the spring's probably about that long so it's compressed about that much so as soon as you pull this off you're not expecting it the spring will shoot off you'll lose this piece spring will go off somewhere and, and then you're like well, now what do i do how to get it back together and all that other stuff so don't take this apart there's nothing behind it besides a spring and plastic. There's no 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 connection thing behind here for a battery. Battery hides inside here. You got to pull these plugs out. Um, you just need a little uh, flat screwdriver maybe or a pocket knife works real well. I got a little little uh, box knife type thing here. Just gotta be careful. Just pop them out. There's a little either a felt screw like that one or some of the old ones. Other new later variations of them have these little s screws with the little square headed hole in them actually here's a screw right here like that they have that stupid square headed screw in them um but you got to pull these little plugs out and if you lose one or whatever or you boogered up real bad don't worry about it they're just plugs that cover the holes of the or cover the screws so then you pull the sc screws out of it And they're all four of the same size. It don't matter which one goes where. Come on, you stupid screw. And pull the back cover off. Set it off to the side. Oh, crap. Look at this. The little plastic. I didn't even realize that. It wasn't broken or put together. Uh, these little plastic um, screw mounts are... One, that one's all cracked and this one's broken well luckily i've got another front case right here this one actually has a button that holds it so we will put this in its place but that's neither here nor there um keep those together so i know where they go all right and you gotta pull this black plastic gas a rubber gasket thing off there and keep that because you'll reuse it all right, battery hides right here. There's a little 3-volt uh, battery inside, like the size of a nickel. 
Um, there's a part number for it, the universal part number, number, no matter what brand of battery you go with. It's a CR2032, or the package on the for the battery may say just 2032. But to get the battery out, um, there's a little hole right back here, a little window there. Just kind of push it, and the battery starts to come out. And you just pull the battery out. That battery's brand new. But yeah, you look on the packaging. And not to be Sony, this just happened to be the brand that we have here on hand. But Auto Parts Store has them, and uh, Hardware Store has them. Uh, I'd say like an Ace Hardware, some small outfit. I don't, I don't know, maybe Home Depot or someplace like that's got them. But it's a um, CR2032, or the pack, and may say it is 2032. It's usually the same kind of battery that goes in those, those key fobs or those little, um, for your car, or like the little automatic lock and unlock door thing for your car that's i think they take takes take the same battery as what this does um so when you pull the old battery out and you go to slide the new one in you slide it right back in and uh if you're not sure which way it goes this has got a little plus stamped on it's hard to see in the video but there's a little plus stamped on there and the battery has a plus stamped on the top so you know which is positive which you know negative you don't want to put it upside down or anyway the battery just goes right in there and see how we See, we lucked out that time. Sometimes you slide a battery in, and the unit won't, the screen doesn't come on. Now these do have an automatic shut off on them, so as soon as it detects no more voltage or whatever from being detected on the fence, um, hitting it, it'll shut off. But this does have a button here, and it's switch cycle between KV and A. And the newer ones that have the amps and the KV on the same screen at the same time, the, the this uh, procedure is exactly the same. Um, but say you put your battery in, and it doesn't come on. Push your battery back out, and sometimes you have to reset them. And what you're going to do is you just need a flat screwdriver or a pocket knife or something, something that's metal. And what you're going to do is with that same area where you press the battery at, you got the bottom plate that the battery sets on, and you got this outer cover that, that goes over the battery. What you're going to do is take a flat screwdriver and you're kind of going like a 45 degree angle. And it'll touch both the negative and the positive, basically, at the same time, and hold it there, and take this battery, and slide it in. Eventually, it's going to come in contact with the screwdriver or pocket knife, and then you slide it in, push it in, and then slowly pull the screwdriver out at the same time, and it should come on just like that. We lucked out the first time shoving the battery in that it came right on. Sometimes it doesn't come on at all, and you have to do that reset thing. If it doesn't work doing that, Sometimes you luck out and you get right the first try doing the reset. Sometimes you get to pull the battery out and try it again. So it, it just it depends on your technique and how you're touching it. And and it's a little touchy there. But um, sometimes it takes you two or three times. Sometimes you get it first try. But um, if, it, if you don't get the first try, slide the battery back out. Put the screwdriver back in there again and slide that battery back in. As you're sliding in, push that battery or push the screwdriver out as you push it in. Um, they may get it get it right the second or third time, but uh, if, if after four or five, six, eight, ten times, whatever, trying that reset still doesn't work, either your battery that you bought or that you thought was good is actually bad, um, or the board's got problems. And you can test these batteries. You can use use a regular old multimeter to check them. It's a little three volt battery. Um, you just DC volts, so you put the positives on top, negatives on the back side, so you put your red lead on top. Likely on the bottom, see this battery is 0.257, so it's less than half a volt on that battery. But this battery is good, so we'll I'll just show you. Get you a good contact point on here. I can't get to it from where it's sitting at, but anyway, this battery is good. It's brand new. I just pulled out the package. I tested it before I put in 3.3 something volts, so this battery is good. Um, so that's how you, you know, you reset uh, the board and replace the battery uh, and to put it back together. You're basically going to kind of do the reverse of what you did before. You're going to, um, uh, you're going to take this rubber piece and we're going to use a different one. See how that, someone's been in it before and boogered up the little O-ring gasket thing that's built in there. So I'll just use that one that came off that spare case I had. So we got these little tabs here. There's these little things here. This one goes right there, so that's how you know which way to put it on. And it has a kind of a 
a groove there so you kind of slide the board and put part of it on the bottom part of it in the underneath the top section there of that gasket and do the same thing over here and just kind of pull it and put it in place it has like an upper and lower part of that gasket and that, that's what helps hold it in place and then put this end to the back cover first I think is the easiest to make sure the gasket's all lined up and, and everything make sure your rubber o-rings are you know overlapping the holes correctly and if you got some dirt in here this is the time you could you know go in there and wipe it down if it if you need it and then put the oh and get this out of the way too it's that piece that over or covers up your little ground probe peg there put that on there I got some crap on this one there and there you go all you have to do is put your screws back in it and then you just want to Press the button every couple seconds to make sure something fell. But you put your uh, put your, press your button every couple seconds on this variation. It should cycle between KV and A back and forth. The new ones, um, newer style ones, don't have KV or A stamp uh, written on there. It does once you get power to it, but it is so just a um, I think couple of little dots. But if it does, then that's, you know, you should be working. The only way to know for certain if everything's working is to hook it up to a, you know, hook it up to your fence and make sure it's reading voltage and current and everything, or voltage and everything like it's supposed to. Um, but these can be fixed. So if you've got a tester or one, you know, not this brand, but if you've got a stay fix or a speed right tester, they work really well. Uh, I don't have no problem with them things, but the only thing is if it, they're a little bit bigger and bulkier than this one is. Um, and if it goes bad, you know, the, the unit gets left outside and gets water in it, or you run it over or it just quits on you for the heck of it, you got to fork the money back over and buy a new one. You know, they're a hundred and some dollars for them things, 125 bucks, give or take for a new one. Um, is, and these Gallagher's are repairable. You know, these Gallagher testers are repairable that, and it goes the same for their, uh, um, their regular voltmeter not their fault finding types but that is how you fix one of these things that had a bad battery in it or weak battery um but yeah these are really good testers um i mean they're compact in size you can put them in your pocket and if you got wear overall overalls you slip them in your front pocket there um you don't leave them outside because um they're not waterproof it does have that gasket in there but it's not waterproof i've seen these things uh, come in for repair with condensation and moisture all up inside of them. So it's good to, um, you know, keep them in a glove box or a toolbox or something. Um, or keep them in your pocket and make sure you bring it inside when you're done. Or leave it in the to toolbox of your truck or something when you're not when you're not using it. But um, good tester. That's a really good tester. It does a really good job. It reads fence real well. It does fault finding real well. It's compact. It's repairable. So that's a good thing about them versus the other brands that are out there they're a little bit less money and they are repairable so that's that's the good thing i like about them plus they can i can fit them in my pocket the speed rides are about twice the size they don't fit in your pocket quite as well but they are handy is just like this one is but if you never had one of these smart gallagher smart fixes or a gallagher fault finder um i would i would look at getting one uh, especially if you got a lot of fence because man you can you can troubleshoot a fence pretty quick with one of these i mean it just saves a lot of trouble uh, if you got a lot of fence or a lot of wire you know multi-strand uh cross fencing this so this will save you a lot of headaches i mean there's guys i've talked to on the phone that have been either um living on a farm and had electric fence for 25 years um but never had one of these and then you'll they'll troubleshoot with the phone with you and her fence and how it's set up and this and that and they've ran the fence and ran the fence i can't find any problems and then I said, well, do you have a tester of any kind? And they're like, no, I don't have a fence. So I just kind of grab the wire and see, or I have one of them flashing light testers. I said, man, you ought to, you know, they got 150 acres. I said, man, I would, I would invest a hundred bucks into one of these things and, and see what happens. And once you, once a person buys one of these things and they um, figure out how it works and how their fence set up and what kind of readings they should be getting versus what they're getting, um, if there's a problem, um, and this thing will save you so much time and so many headaches. Um, these things are worth their weight in gold. 
Uh, so I, I would, we don't sell anything, but I would recommend if you don't have one of these, um, if you're thinking about buying one, I would get one. Especially if you got a lot of fence or if you got a great big unit. Um, these don't work real good on smaller jewel units because it doesn't trigger the amps very well, the fault finding part of it. Um, plus, if you got like a couple acres and you got like a little half jewel charger on there, I wouldn't bother with one of these. But if you've got, um, I would say if you got a one jewel or bigger, or two jewels or bigger on a unit, and you got you know two, three, five, ten, twenty acres or more, I would say it depends on what you're what you're doing. If you got, I said if you got more than ten acres, I would say probably get one of these two. But if you got five acres and you got a uh, you know two, three, four jewel unit or bigger. Uh, these this would probably help you especially if you got multi-strand setup it would definitely help you out with troubleshooting and finding where your fault's at um but hopefully this helps you out on you know how these things work and how you, uh, you use one a little bit and how to replace and reset the battery or reset replace the battery and set the board if you have to um that's what this video is mostly about but until we do another video on one of these things um we will see you guys later